Hey everyone, welcome uh, to week 10, Lone 2. Um, I hope we can get through this lecture in about 20 minutes, okay? Uh, I am just going over today, I'm going over uh, graded essays number one. I'm going to show you some examples of some um, highly graded essays and some low graded essays to kind of talk about the differences between the two of them and like why they were scored, what they were scored. So that way you can learn from it. You can look at what um, the examples that, that I go over. You can compare it to the essay that you turned in and the grade you got. So that way you can try to learn from it and do better on your second essay. So that way, as you are editing um, a uh, person's rough draft today, and as you'll be editing your paper next week, um, or as, and some of you might, might, might start this week to edit your paper, which is a, be a good thing, you want to mirror the positive things that um, I go over today, okay? And make, sure, and make sure that your essays are not doing the negative things that I'll talk about. All right, so let's first look at an A paper. This paper is an A, all right? I, uh, I changed the name to the student, even though I'm sure the student wouldn't mind if I did uh, reveal who they were because this is, an, this is an, I'm not being critical. This is a good paper, but I just went and gave this paper the name Jerry Garcia. Um, we had this person's last name was uh, all capital letters up here, the very top. Um, just looking at the the, the uh, format of the paper, right off the bat, you can see that the lines have been justified. See, justify, okay, um, and which is good. It's not all raggedy here. It's, it's, it's straight down and it's straight down. If I select all, um, this uh, the whole paper is times new Roman because if any line, if, any, if, just, if even just one word was not New uh, Times New Roman. This would be blank. And the whole paper is 12 point font. If, even if one word was, was 13 point font, this would be um, blank. If I go to paragraph, um, oh, look, okay, well, I missed something here. Somewhere there's not zero, zero, um, double. But even when I changed it, I can't notice. I don't, I, I didn't notice where it was, so. There's that, okay. Um, looking at there's it's 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 a thousand words. It's over a thousand words, which for the first paper was important, okay. It's three full pages typed, which is good for the first paper, okay. Um, let's look at um, the introduction, okay. Um, we get. The author goes into talking about the way that writers write. Um, we have In Regret by Kate Chopin. We see a middle-aged lady who is breaking gender norms of this time period and is living independently. That's great. She's granted the opportunity to take care of her children for a few weeks. Okay, so we have a brief little explanation of what regret's about, okay? And then we get a thesis. Regret by Kate Chopin develops a theme that, is, that independence can lead to loneliness. So one paragraph is gonna be about theme, which was, part of the requirement, uh, uses a formal tone, okay, great, and enhances an overall idea of feminism. Now, this completely follows the, um, let's see, let me share this, the assignment, okay, look, on the assignment page, it says, you are going to write a literary analysis essay over a short story of your picking. You will read the story, analyze the theme the tone or style, and what are some of the deeper messages it is sending, literary criticism. I went over those PowerPoints about feminism and Marxism and uh, critical race theory, okay? Um, and so you were gonna talk about, uh, provide some sort of literary criticism of the story as well. And then, I mean, these are your very basic uh, requirements. MLA formatting contains outside sources, and is at least 850 words, okay? So based upon that, this A paper addresses, is a, it's, a, it's a thousand words, and thesis talks about theme, style, and critical analysis. 
And then the first paragraph, the first body paragraph is about theme, which follows the thesis statement. Okay, the first thing mentioned in the thesis statement should be the first body paragraph. All right, um, and so here she talks about, or he talks about the story of regret and the theme. All right, provides some outside sources. Independence is the, quote, the freedom from outside control, not requiring or relying on others. Kahana, okay? And then that's applied to regret, the story. Uh, the next body paragraph is about formal tone. See, the claim of, the of this second body paragraph connects us to the claim, uh, or I guess the thesis that's made right here. Formal tone. So in the thesis, first we have theme, then tone. Well, here we have first we have theme, and then we have tone. Okay. We have quotes. We have quotes from the story. We have outside resource right there. Good, good, good. And then the last one is about feminism, which connects again to the thesis feminism. Okay. Good, good, good. We have quotes that are integrated. These are not drop quotes. In it set, all right, it says, we have comma. The quotes are introduced. There are no drop quotes in this short story. And then we have, boom, okay? Now, I mean, that's an error. That peer shouldn't be there, okay? So A papers are not void of errors. But there are generally small errors. There's there are errors like of grammar, okay. Um, but they're not errors of of lack of length, lack of depth, organization, okay. Um, and then here's the works cited page, Chopin, and then the the sources that were used, and they're in alphabetical order. And you see the lot each subsequent line of each source is indented. The first line of the source is not indented. It's the subsequent lines that are indented. Okay. And there's no additional spaces. There's no like some people turn in things like this. It's like, no, that's that that would be incorrect. There's no additional lines in between the sources used. Okay. All right. So this is an A paper. Jared Garcia. Way to go. You wrote an A paper. So let's look at the B example. This is a B paper. Okay. B paper by Donna Summers. Not really her name. Okay. And so Donna's looks pretty lengthy. Okay. The work site is good. It's over. Um, a, th uh, a thousand words, okay? And so, um, so this B paper is, is really good. And the main issue that makes it a B is that the writer did not use proper quotation marks when quoting, okay? This is a highly, uh, a very high level B. We have uh, the, the short story. We have written correctly. Clearly, this student watched my other lectures about how to write titles and how to punctuate titles. Okay, because we have we have quotation marks and we have the comma here. We have um, a, a brief uh, uh, summary of what happens in the story. Okay. Um, and then we have, um, it's uh, sort of a thesis. The C change, which we need no comment here, focuses on the importance of overcoming insecurity and pursuing acceptance using its theme, its literary elements, and its moral lens. Now, oh, sorry, my, my video is off. Let's see. Okay, so that is uh, the 
the thesis is not as like clearly stated okay it's uh you know it's definitely lacking a little bit but that's all right i mean um let's see here okay sorry back to this so um but at least it's on the theme and it's talks it refers to literary elements and refers to a moral lens even if it's not as descriptive okay um then in the next paragraph we have the sea change we are presented with the themes of acceptance and sexuality phil struggles with with accepting both okay so uh again this body paragraph relates back to the theme which is the first thing mentioned in the thesis which is great okay and there's uh but they, then here's where we get into the problematic area okay uh this writer is citing hemingway when um quoting okay but which also that by the way is technically misspelled there's just one m in hemingway um but here we have the quoting of a outside source by the writer mcmanus and it says the man cannot comprehend an individual's sexuality when it does not mirror his own or why his girlfriend would be interested in having a relationship with another woman the problem here is that this is a direct quote this is not a summary this is not a paraphrase of what this writer has written this is an exact quote and there are one two three four instances of those okay four instances where the writer uh quoted actual word for word lines from this article okay and while some of them have actually have a um oh this is one written by tom right here pamela tom uh these are not uh summarized these are direct quotes okay and so uh you cannot even if you have a it's not plagiarism because if there was no um, in a parenthetical citation, then that would be a case of plagiarism. But the writer, um, Summers, did, Donna, did uh, include a parenthetical citation to state that <clears throat> this is not an original idea. Well, the problem though is that without quotation marks, it appears to be more of a paraphrase or a summary, when in fact it's a direct quote, okay? So direct quotes need, actual quotation marks and so uh which then would make this a drop quote so, because this is a between a period and a period we have quotation marks this is a drop quote which is incorrect but then like this one right here though this full sentence this person third person narration is objective and then we have the narrator can say things about the viewpoint character that the viewpoint character probably wouldn't admit to themselves this is a direct quote And the reason I know that is because turnitin.com caught it and found it and highlighted it for me. Okay. This sentence was it's this is a quote that's integrated into what this writer this writer originally uh crafted. The man cannot comprehend, but this is where the quote begins. So there should be quotation marks. Okay. So um if this would be if this was if this if Donna did not include this parenthetical citation then these would be four examples of plagiarism which is which results in a zero for the paper but she clearly tried to show that she was quoting okay only problem though is that you can't leave off the quotation marks okay even if you add a, a parenthetical citation so if this paper if all of these four were integrated and they had um and they had uh parenthetical citations added correctly and there were periods there i mean i mean quotation marks then this paper would have received an a okay but there's just too many instances of of um incorrectly utilized quotes that uh this paper could not uh respectfully earn an a okay all right Let's look at essay um, example three. 
Let's see. C paper. Okay. All right. Hold on one second. Let's see. C paper. The C paper it should be pretty easy to uh, pick up on why it's a C. Let's see, new share. So if we look at this already, you should see that this, this is all weird. This um, don't understand why this formatting is the way it is. Okay, this should be all over here. Should be in line with the header. Okay, there should be no additional spaces between any line of, of this essay. Okay, um, it's only 676 words, so it's too short. The works cited page is totally incorrect. We don't say citations, we say this is MLA formatting, so it's works cited. Um, these are incorrect citations. They're, they're not even written correctly. They're not formatted correctly. It should be double. It should be zero. And the second line of each quote should be, I mean, of each source should be oops, indented. And there is no publication. There's all it is, the title and, and the author. Oh, and there's, it's still, um, Oops. There we go. So yeah, there's this very problematic. And then on, not only that, just scrolling through, I can see that. Look, this is we don't do we don't have commas after this after the author's last name. And we don't do page, you know, PG dot. It's just the last name and, and the page number. I went over this several times and we don't do, I don't know why people have been doing these uh, uh, ye publication years. This is not what's used in MLA formatting. I've never, I've never discussed having the, the, the year in which it was published. I do not understand that. And I saw that in multiple papers. So that's incorrect. Okay, um, let's see, let's go to paragraph. So that was off. Okay, so already this paper is, is a C because of the formatting and the length. Okay, then we look at the, um, our thesis. Issa describes the stereotype that women of different races are supposed to automatically know how to dance and know how and how peer pressure made her realize she had it in her all along, but it wasn't what defined her as a person. Okay, this thesis is non topic of what I've, I've discussed for y'all to to deal with. Okay, uh, for to write about. Um, there's no mentioning of tone or style or theme. But then her, the first paragraph, though, says we are presented with the themes of peer pressure and racial stereotyping. This paragraph is still about the theme, okay? And then we have the third body paragraph. The author's tone in her writing is humorous. She makes it relatable. Okay, so this is talking about tone, okay? And then the issue of stereotyping. So, you know, these things that are discussed in the paper are, do relate to the assignment description, okay, they, they connect, but they're not properly laid out in the introduction, which is why also this paper is not an A or a B, okay? So it follows the requirements just enough to be passing, which, which even though D is passing, D is not really passing. 
Okay, uh, because if you made a D in this class, you would still have to retake this class. So a C is the lowest grade you can get. If you made all C's on all your work, you made a C in the class, fine. You can move on to 1102, it's barely passing. And this paper is a C, barely passing, okay. It is, the conclusion's really short, the paper itself is really short, the formatting was really, was, was, was incorrect. Uh, there is no clear thesis statement that that previews what was going to be discussed in these other three body paragraphs. Yet, at the same time, it's saved oops, by the fact that the three body paragraphs are, in fact, uh, on topic of what was asked to be discussed. All right, so that's a C. Finally, a D paper. Let's see. Stop share. Let's go to my D paper or yeah. Okay. Let's see here. All right, so here we have some problems already looking at this. One, here we have no last name. No last name, so I need to put Kane, okay. This is out of order. Okay, um, need to get rid of that space there. Let's see, check the formatting. Hope oh, it's incorrect. This is blank. This shouldn't be blank. So if it was correct, all this would come up like zero, zero, double. Okay. All right. Um, this is not how, you, if you're talking about a novel, you do not underline it. So that's incorrect. It's only 653 words. Okay. We have one long paragraph and then we have a second long paragraph and that's it. Works at a page is incorrect and off. Okay. So already you know that this is not talking about what was meant to be discussed okay um so this is a long uh summary the book what's happening and it moves into some analysis okay uh sort of stream of consciousness um there is no thesis statement here okay um we have some analysis okay um so i'm trying to understand what the book is really about this is why i give this paper a d because at least attempts to talk about a story and it attempts to analyze the story and try to dissect it even though it doesn't actually follow any of the requirements for the paper okay um not the word number, not paragraph numbers, not balance, and none of the things I've discussed uh, that you need to talk about in the paper, okay? Um, simply turning in a paper that's on a short story and just kind of doing whatever you want to do in that paper does not result in, in, a, in a passing grade. 
yes, a D isn't an F, but a D, like I said before, if you get all Ds on your papers, you make a D in the class and you would not be able to move on. You have to retake the class, okay? So um, this kind of paper does not meet the standard or the requirement, okay? Um, it is about a short story, yes, but it does not follow what I laid out and explain that one the paper to be on does not have proper um, paragraphs in it that, that discuss theme, tone, and uh, literary criticism. Um, there's punctuation problems here, grammatical problems, okay? So you gotta make sure that, that, that what you are writing is what has been assigned, that you follow the assignment and that you include the things that I've asked you to do. So like in this paper, that was to discuss tone, um, that was to discuss theme, and that was to, to, to provide a literary analysis of it. Okay. All right, well, I hope that helps. I hope uh, that you all have an understanding of, like, of papers that were A's, B's, C's, and D's. Um, I hope that you think about the things I've discussed here and apply that to the current paper that you're that you're working on, making sure it follows exactly what it is that I've discussed in the um, in the description of the essay that you that you have that you meet all those requirements. All right, and in terms of this paper, here are the requirements. In case so we're all on the same page, okay? Under less, essay two, poetry essay. Your second analytical essay is based on one of one to three of the poems from the packet, okay, female, queer, and black perspectives. You may analyze the theme, tone, symbolism, style, or critical interpretations of the poems. You can choose one long poem to discuss, or you can discuss three different poems, analyzing a different element from each. Your essay must have these components, an introduction, body, conclusion, thesis statement, okay. It needs to be double spaced, three to four full pages, about 1200 words and written in 12 point font. Okay, so you're, you're picking one group of poems, either the female perspective in poetry, the queer perspective in poetry, or the black perspective. And from those packets of poems, you are, you are analyzing one to three of them. And you, you need to talk about tone, theme, symbolism, okay? Of however many things you need to talk about in order to get 1,200 words, okay? So a poem, so you can discuss the theme of one poem, the tone of another poem, and the symbolism of a third poem. And then if you don't quite have um, 1,200 words, then you, you can do a fourth poem and talk about the critical interpretation of it, as long as they all come from the same perspective, okay? If you have any questions about that, or you're not sure if you're doing it correctly, then please see me or email me ask me and I will help you out. Okay. All right. Uh, take it easy and hope this all makes sense.